Good morning, greetings, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health and nutrition or prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls at 844-236-6010. We want to be your go-to source for all things nutrition. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have a success story you'd like to share, we love hearing those. And if you just want to contribute to the conversation and be part of the program today, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the Bright Side, please go to my website, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. I've got blog stories or blog posts and news stories at brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and pharmacistben.com. You can also call the Bright Side Ben phone team at 866 735 2470. That's 866 735 2470. And don't forget to ask about joining the Bright Side Ben team. For a one-time $25 fee, you can start a longevity business, get your products at the wholesale price, earn thank you checks, and help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program and enjoy all the benefits of having your own business. If you're an entrepreneur, you know what I'm talking about. Writing off your mileage, your home office, your tax, your uh, stamps, writing, they're all tax, tax write-offs when you have your own business, making your own hours, working out of the home and making as much or as little money as you like, call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470, and they can give you the full scoop. All right. We are continuing talking about the polyphenols and the phytonutrients and all this good stuff that's in nature's bounty, the plants and the vegetables, the fruits, the peels of fruits, the peels of the vegetables, the seeds of the vegetables. All of these are just mother loads of nutrition. We've been talking about sun protection and the polyphenols and the phenolic acids, specifically something called cinnamic acid, from which we get the name cinnamon. Now, cinnamic acid, which is found in olive and olive oil and strawberries and cranberries and cocoa and coffee, basil, bee products, honey, propolis, all of these are good sources of cinnamic acid as well as cinnamon. The cinnamic acids, like most of the polyphenols, absorb ultraviolet light. And in fact, when the, U, when the uh, cinnamic acid in the leaves is activated by UV light, it, it actually acts like a, like a switch for growth. It's sort of a bioelectrical circuit that activates the growth of the plants. So the sunlight hits the cinnamic acid, and then the cinnamic acid, which is now activated by the sunlight, functions as a growth switch that turns on growth in the plants. And this ability of cinnamic acid to absorb sunlight is really very important, and I think it's there's a lot of benefits. There's a lot of reasons why cinnamic acid is, uh, is an important phytonutrient. It's antiviral. It's antibacterial. It kills, uh, it kills fungus. It's uh, anti-inflammatory. 
It protects the liver. It's got fragrance properties. I mean, it's, there's a lot of things that cinnamic acid does. But in my opinion, probably the most important and most functional role for cinnamic acid is in terms of its ability to absorb ultraviolet light. Certainly, this, this property is regarded as of the utmost importance and benefit by skincare companies who use cinnamic acid to create the derivative, which we talked about yesterday, octomethoxy cinnamate, which is a, a chemically manipulated form of cinnamic acid, and in my opinion, a poster child and an iconic example of what we got, what we get wrong when it comes to skin protection, when it comes to, to, to sun protection. We're told by dermatologists and skincare professionals we got to slather on the sunscreens like octomethoxy cinnamate, completely ob oblivious to the fact that octomethoxy cinnamate is toxic. It's cytotoxic, it kills cells, and it's readily absorbed through the skin, through the surface of the skin, the stratum corneum, and it very likely gets into the blood. And even worse, the sun, from which we're, uh, it's supposed to be protective, actually deactivates the octomethoxy cinnamate. So you put it on your skin and go out in the sun, and it gets deactivated by sunlight. And even worse, it's, it gets turned into a pro-aging, oxidized, skin-damaging, free radical. Now, how stupid is this? You put on your sunscreen, it gets deactivated by the sun, it gets turned into a nasty, pro-aging, and very likely pro-cancerous free radical. This is craziness. The UV light from which we're supposed to be protected by this stuff actually creates changes that cause mutations and cell death. According to the Environmental Working Group's cosmetic database, octomethoxy cinnamate is associated with possible toxic effects to the immune system, the reproductive system, and it is especially toxic to the liver. This is the same stuff that your genius dermatologist tells you to slather on it before you go out in the sun. And on top of everything else, the stuff goes into the blood. It goes, at least it goes through the skin, very likely goes into the blood. According to the Environmental Working Group, octomethoxy cinnamate is 70% safe. I don't know what that means. When I see that, I see 30% not safe, 30% toxic, and that is a good reason to avoid using octomethoxy cinnamate. The only way you're gonna know is by, if it's in your product, is by being an ingredient reader. Read the ingredient deck. Now, it's a little easier with sunscreens because in sunscreens and sun protection products, the FDA regulates that the label will distinguish between the active ingredients and the inactive ingredients. So you don't have to necessarily, if you're trying to assess whether the stuff is in your sun protection product, you don't have to read the whole label, which is kind of a which is a little bit difficult, although I think everybody should be ingredient readers and everybody should read the entire ingredient deck, and that's why in my True Skin Health products, you only get four or five ingredients for the most part. My Omega-6 Healing Cream has nine ingredients, but the other products have three or four or five ingredients. If you get a department store product, you're going to have to wade through 90 ingredients or 80 ingredients, but still, it's, in, it's something we should do if we're going to be spreading this stuff on our skin. Now, with sunscreens, it's a little bit easier because the active ingredients are distinguished from the inactive ingredients, and you'll usually see octomethoxy cinnamate pretty boldly and pretty prominently displayed if it's in the product. I advise staying away from it. Now, you don't want to burn. If your option is to use this stuff or burn, then use the stuff. But just to use it routinely is not a good idea. I know I've said that before. I say it all the time. It's bears repeating. It's not good stuff. And, by the way, the Environmental Working Group suggests that it be used with caution in pregnant women because pregnant women are, are applying sunscreen for two because the baby's getting stuff. What does that tell you? It's getting into the blood. I suggest it be used by caution with everybody, not just pregnant women and not just babies. Now, while cinnamic acid's derivative, octomethoxy cinnamate, sometimes called octanoxate, while this stuff is cytotoxic and best avoided, cytotoxic means it's toxic to cells, and while, you, in my opinion, it's best avoiding, uh, you're best off avoiding this stuff, or at least minimizing your content, uh, contact, uh, con, uh, contact with it, the cinnamic acid, now that stuff is completely gentle. It's completely non-toxic, and it has sunscreen properties. Admittedly, they're nowhere near as powerful as OMC, octomethoxy cinnamate, but it does have some sun protection properties, and this brings us to one of my all-time favorite skin care ingredients, a wonderful source of cinnamic acid, and all 
also known for its sun protection properties. I'll tell you what that is when we come back from our break. I am Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll return right after this. We are back on the bright side. I'm pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. We do have lines open for you. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, health, nutrition, you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program. If you saw something on TV or heard something or read something on the Internet and you want clarification, questions about ingredients or formulations about our True Skin Health products, 844-236-6010 is our number. And if you just want to contribute to the conversation, we love hearing from our smart bright side listeners. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. And speaking of our True Skin Health products, you can check them all out at truthtreatments.com. We now have a special going until the end of the month on our True Serum. A uh, a uh, trial size of True Serum now will uh, is we're selling for twenty nine dollars. If you want to check that out, go to truthtreatments.com. Take a look at all our Truth Treatment products. Truth Retinol five percent gel for anti aging and and uh, wrinkle reduction and wrinkle prevention and acne, hyperpigmentation, dark spots. Our Truth Serum, Truth Omega Six Healing Cream, and Truth Balm. They're all up at truthtreatments.com. Truthtreatments.com. Never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, water, oil, silicon, propylene glycol, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products. Okay, so we're talking cinnamic acid, one of the, one of the uh, more multifunctional of the polyphenols found in cinnamon as well as basil and cranberries and cocoa and coffee. Pretty much, I've, pretty much all plants are going to have a, at least a teeny, teeny, tiny amount of cinnamic acid. But one of my all-time favorite sources of cinnamic acid is shea butter. Now, I've been using shea butter for decades in the skincare world. It's a wonderful moisturizer, skin softener. It's got natural plant steroids, so it's got anti-inflammatory properties, but it also has cinnamic acid. I first discovered uh, shea butter as a compounding pharmacist. I, was, I started putting, in, putting it in my retinol products, and I quickly became uh, enamored with its incredible healing benefits and its really nice texture. A little bit heavy, but you've got to know how to formulate with it. If you formulate with it correctly, you can get rid of that heaviness. Works well with lecithin, by the way. If you want to make your own shea butter product, use a little lecithin oil. Work together really well. Lecithin is also an emulsifier, so you can add a little bit of water to your shea butter. Shea butter, lecithin, and a little bit of water. It also smells really nice. has this chocolate-like aroma, this kind of cocoa aroma. And if you add a little vanilla or a little lime or maybe some lavender essential oil, it can really create this really fragrant, beautiful quality. And in addition to having a nice soft texture, you can do a lot of good things with shea butter. Shea butter is a butter. It's a fatty substance. It's not like the kind of butter that you spread on your toast, but it's got a kind of creamy, buttery sort of quality. They say it's semi-solid or semi-soft. Shea butter is derived from the nut of the shea tree, which is cultivated pretty much in all the countries of Africa, Cameroon, Senegal, the Ivory Coast, Nigeria is a big source of shea butter. And African folk medicine has leveraged the incredible health benefits of shea butter for thousands of years. First became popular in the, uh, in the Western world in the late 1700s when this guy named Mungo Park first introduced it to Europeans. He was an explorer, a European explorer. That in the 1700s and in the 1800s, they were really going nuts trying to explore the, the whole world. And Africa had all these resources, and they got very excited. So they started to explore all the different parts of Africa and find all the cool, cool spices that weren't available in Europe. And this guy named Mungo Park wrote a book called Travels in the Interior District of Africa. And it was a kind of chronicle of his adventures in, uh, in Africa. And he started talking about this incredible buttery substance that the natives were using as sun protection and to, uh, for infections and for all kinds of skin problems. 
And he's the first guy to really start talking about shea butter. If you know anything about skincare, if, even if you're just a consumer of skincare products, you, you undoubtedly have heard of shea butter. It's found in thousands of different products, creams and lotions and cleansers and masks. You can even find shea butter in cosmetic products and lipsticks and rouges. It can soften dry, chapped skin. It can speed healing of burns and abrasions and rashes. As I say, it has natural plant steroids in it, which we're going to be talking about in a later, plant, in a later uh, Bright Side episode, plant steroids being a very, very important class of phytonutrients. Shea butter is loaded with these anti-inflammatory anti plant steroids. Steroids like, like uh, plant steroids, like drug steroids, are anti-inflammatory. They quiet down the immune system. Not as potent as drug steroids, like prednisone, of course, but still has a kind of calming effect for folks who are dealing with eczema or uh, uh, itching. It's got natural anti-itch properties, which can be a godsend if you're dealing with poison ivy or poison oak. Pregnant women, uh, all over the world really, pregnant women know about shea butter for its anti-stretch mark benefits. According to a 2000, and I'm not, by the way, I'm not convinced that it's anti-stretch mark. I'm not certainly not recommending it as anti-stretch mark. I'm just saying this is one of its more common uses. I haven't found that it worked for stretch marks, stretch marks being connective tissue problems. By the way, if you want to get rid of stretch marks, use topical vitamin C or even topical vitamin A. Those are, that's how you not get rid of stretch marks. Once they're there, they're there. But that's how you prevent their formation. Put topical vitamin C and topical retinol on your skin uh, as your belly is expanding, even though your doctor will tell you, oh, don't use retinol or don't use vitamin A on your skin because you're pregnant, which is one of the dumbest things among many dumb things doctors say. One of the dumbest things that t they tell you is to avoid vitamin A uh, or avoid using topical vitamin A when you're pregnant. Anyway, uh, a 2010 paper published in the Journal of Oleo Sciences, oleo means fat, a 2010 paper published in this journal, the Journal of Oleo Sciences found that, the, uh, that shea butter can inhibit tumors and inhibit viruses. It's been shown to, uh, this one in a study from uh, the British Journal of Clinical Pharmacology in 1979, May 1979, it's been shown to, it was shown to reduce inflammation in the sinus passages, relieving congestion more effectively. According to researchers in this article, it was uh, more effective than ordinary nasal drops. Last week, I spilled some boiling water in my hand, and while I had a nice little red burn, I have a, keep a bottle of uh, a jar of shea butter uh, right by my stove. I put a little bit on my skin. Never, never felt any pain. Less than a week later, the burn was completely healed. The secret of shea butter's impressive beneficial properties, well, there's a lot of secrets, but one of the main secrets are these natural plant chemicals that we call the phytosteroid, phytosterols or phytosteroids. These things are anti-inflammatory and they act similar, as I said, to our own natural steroids, similar to our cortisol and similar to uh, pharmacological steroids, similar to prednisone, but unlike prednisone, it's gentle and it's non-addicting and you don't have to deal with that crazy rebound thing that happens when people use a prednisone or when they use cortisol on their skin. They, when you stop using cortisol after you've been using it for a long time, you get a rebound irritation that can be absolutely, absolutely miserable, like a kind of steroid withdrawal, a, a skin steroid withdrawal. You get rashes and redness and lesions. It can be pretty, pretty serious. In fact, it's the same thing that you use the steroid cream to prevent in the first place and then you stop using the steroid. It's like you get punished for, stop use, for, for uh, stopping the steroid. Unfortunately, because it's so gentle and because it really doesn't have the, that, the same kind of potency as a drug, its effects are much more subtle compared to uh, pharmaceutical type creams. Shea butter doesn't get the attention that it deserves, in my opinion. In addition to natural steroids, shea butter also has uh, uh, wonderful fatty acids similar to the ones that are found in other nuts and seeds. You'll get some omega-6 essential fatty acids, which is at least partially responsible for its anti-rash benefits, for its dry, uh, for its benefits for healing dry cha chafed or chapped skin. And it's got natural sunscreen agents. This is shea butter's most impressive claim to fame, in my opinion. It is a good source of the cinemates, which gives it natural sunscreen properties. We'll talk about that as we continue on the bright side. On our next episode, we'll hit the phones when we come back from our break. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back after this. You We are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. We have six, six years plus of archives. 
of good health information with a search engine if you miss a program or want to review a specific topic or direct a patient or a client or, or a friend or family member or loved one to a specific topic that we've discussed. And we've discussed all kinds of stuff on the Bright Side over the last six years. Head to brightsideben.com or benfuchsarchives.com. And if you want to purchase Longevity products, you can get them off brightsideben.com and pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the websites, or you can call the phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. All right, we'll get your phones, uh, phone calls here in a sec. We could, uh, have lots of lines open at 844-236-6010 if you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today or health questions in general. 844-236-6010 is our number. A couple uh, interesting stories I want to get to, and then uh, we'll get your calls here uh, right afterwards. If you're on hold, hang on. And we do have lines open, 844-236-6010. This uh, from the American Diabetes Association. Diabetes continues its relentless rise. Two new studies on diabetes deliver good news and bad news, but the overall message is that the disease remains a, quote, formidable health burden. The first study looked at the incidence of type 1 and type 2 diabetes, and rates for both types of diabetes increased, especially among racial and ethnic minorities. The second uh, reported a drop in the incidence of heart disease and stroke with, uh, in adults with diabetes, probably because now we're taking better care of ourselves, at least when it comes to cardiovascular health, but we're not, most certainly not, taking better care of ourselves when it comes to diabetes. And this is so tragic to me. Diabetes is said to be the third or fourth leading cause of death after cancer and heart disease and uh, uh, medical disease, that is um, uh, medical deaths, medically induced deaths, iatrogenic disease, they call that. So diabetes is said to be the third or fourth leading cause of death. But what we're not factoring in is the fact that cancer is caused by blood sugar problems and uh, heart disease is caused by blood sugar problems. So in a way, diabetes is the leading cause of death. And it's certainly a or maybe the leading cause of health misery. That is dysglycemia. And this is so important that we make this distinction between dysglycemia and diabetes. Diabetes is the official pronouncement that you get from a doctor. Doctors live to diagnose. This is their raison d'etre. Not all doctors, but the vast majority of modern medicine is about diagnosis. When you get diagnosed, you get condemned to your disease state. It is a witch doctor trick. Just like old witch doctors would condemn people to death or life by putting a curse on them, that's what doctors do with a diagnosis. It's not fair, it's mean-spirited, it doesn't serve us, and we should not be condemned to our diagnosis. Di uh, diabetes, like all chronic degenerative diseases, is reversible, period. Dr. Wallach used to get all kinds of grief, and I used to get grief by saying that you could cure diabetes. I don't like the word cure, that's magic. It's not cure, it's reverse. Chronic degenerative disease is a process. It's a verb. It's not a noun. When we, th when we nominify it, nomin uh, nominalize it, we make it into a noun, we make it into a thing. It becomes permanent. Diabetes is a verb. Nobody has diabetes. We're diabetes-ing. It's a process. It's reversible. And the fact that it's such a miserable, miserable, miserable disease that's not only a leading cause of death, but a leading cause of blindness and a leading cause of amputation and a leading cause of pain, pain nerve pain, neuropathy, it's so tragic to me. You, if you have diabetes, if you, I should say if you're diabetes -ing, or you've been condemned with a diagnosis of diabetes, change the way you eat, number one. Change the way you supplement, number two. And change the way you move your body or don't move your body. Change the way you exercise your body, number three. You'll also have to work with cortisol levels because in addition to food, cortisol is another reason why blood sugar gets messed up. Those are the two reasons right there. Then they're lifestyle rate related. Cortisol and food. Nobody has to have diabetes. Now, type 1 diabetes is a little bit different because it's an autoimmune disorder, but still, today we know that type 1 diabetes is also related to digestive health. 
So it's so tragic and heartbreaking to me, this whole idea uh, of diabetes being a leading cause of death and a leading cause of illness and a leading cause of misery. It just breaks my heart when I see diabetics. Please understand, if you're on a drug, a diabetes drug, and by the way, the diabetes drugs are still drugs, and they're going to kill you too. So you may lower your blood sugar artificially with your metformin or your Genuvia or whatever prescription drug you have, but you still have the biochemical problem that led to the issue. All right, this is another article, very similar. How to eat chocolate without piling on the pounds this summer. This is published in a journal called, or on a website called The Conversation. Easter is once again upon us, and for many people it's time when a little more chocolate than usual is consumed. The authors of this uh, article continue, uh, go on to say how important chocolate can be. Dark chocolate is a source of flavonoids, the polyphenols that we've been talking about. Uh, as many uh, as many as there are in, in vegetables. Zinc, phosphorus, manganese, iron, these are all found in chocolate. This is why periodically you'll hear that chocolate is a health food. It is not a health food, and nobody likes chocolate. We like chocolate and fat, and sh or cocoa and fat and sugar. Nobody would ever eat baker's chocolate. If you don't believe me, go to the supermarket, buy some baker's chocolate, and munch down on it. It tastes awful. Cocoa is very medicinal and very bitter, but when it has sugar and fat in it, it's delicious. So chocolate is not a health food, I'm sorry to say. It's not as bad, perhaps, dark chocolate. is. You know, It's got some nutritional value, but it's not a health food. Anyway, how are you going to eat chocolate? Well, the authors of this, uh, of this study, or this article, talk about an experiment that was done where they divided people into three groups. The first group drank a, consumed a drink which contained just sugar, a sugar drink. The second group drank the same beverage, but they did some walking after they, ate the, after they drank the sugar beverage. And then the third group drank the sugar beverage, but added, uh, uh, had a little protein and a little fat in the beverage too, and the same amount of calories, but they added a little bit of protein and fat to the sugar. Well, guess what? If you took a walk after you ate the sugar, you didn't gain as much weight, and if you drank a little protein and a little fat with your sugar, you didn't gain as much weight. These are the kind of strategies we can employ if we're trying to lose weight or if we're trying to stabilize our blood sugar. Make sure that after you eat sugar, you drink a lot of water. This will dilute your blood sugar. Make sure that when you're eating sugar, you're eating it with fiber. This will mop up the sugar. Make sure when you're eating your sugar, you're using protein and fat, uh, particularly fat, because that will help fill you up and uh, uh, activate satiety so you won't eat as much sugar. What you want to try to avoid is eating pure straight sugar, which is what we do when we eat candy. That's, that's really the big problem. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. This one's kind of, well, I think we'll hit the phones. We'll say this for Monday. Robert in Texas, good morning. Welcome to the Bright Side, buddy. Good morning. Uh... I sent in the swab, and they tell me I have blood in my stool. Okay. Are you in pain at all? But, uh, sir? Are you in any pain? No, no, no. I Are had you... colon cancer one time back in 91, but I got it all, but I had a check to it the time. Well, that's not good. Blood in the stool is not good, particularly if you have a history of colon cancer. Hang on, uh, uh, Robert. We'll, we got to take a break. We'll finish up when we come back, okay? 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open, and uh, we'll return with you and your phone calls right after this. Don't go away. This is Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number, and we do have lines open for you, 844-236-6010. We're talking to Robert in Texas. Uh, got some blood in the stool. Robert, are you there, sir? Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, it could be a lot of things, but the fact that you have a history of colon cancer, that's sort of alarming. Is it, uh, is, is it bright red blood, or is it that the stools are kind of black and tarry? How, uh, what makes you say well, there's I blood in there? I didn't see anything when I took the just a stool sample. Oh, I see. But I okay. didn't see nothing in it at all. Okay, so in other words, it was a very tiny amount, but they could detect it with with a blood t with a uh, stool sample test. Yes, sir. 
Okay, I got you. Um, they call that the, a, a fecal occult test, and sometimes the blood, uh, the amount of blood is so tiny that you can you can only detect it with a with this um, a fecal test, fecal occult test. But it's still not a good thing. Now it could be related to uh, anal fissure or cut of some kind, hemorrhoids, diverticulitis, uh, or diverticulosis. Um, it could have to do with fragile vessels. It doesn't necessarily Im implicate a colon issue, but it could. So are you having a check? Did, did you have it looked at? Did you do a colonoscopy or anything like that? Oh, not yet. I was going to talk to you first. No, but, uh, you want to have that looked at, my friend. You want to definitely have that peered into, especially because you have a history. Are you on any medication? Okay. Are you on any blood thinning type of drugs? Are you taking aspirin or anything like that? Nothing like that. I'm just taking beyond Japan's rain and taking 2,000 cc's of vitamin C every day. No, it wouldn't be that, although I will say that sometimes people get yellow urine from the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. That's a, a consequence of the vitamin B2 content of the, uh, yeah. of the BTT, but this is something different. Um, I would have that looked at, Robert. That's not something you want to play around with. I mean, you want to be really, you want to take care of that and quickly, in my opinion. Okay, okay. Okay? Thank you. All right. Thank All right, you. my man. Good. Yeah, there's, you know what? There's, when you have a history of uh, cancer, you don't want to be playing around, that, in my opinion, especially uh, colon okay. cancer. Okay. Thank All you, right. Robert. Take care, man. Okay. All right. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. Let's go to Shauna in Idaho. Hey, Shauna. Hey, how are you? Can you hear me? I hear you. Are you the Shauna I was talking to last year by any chance? Wait for show? that book. Yeah, What's that's that? me. I'm waiting for your book to come out. You're waiting for my book. All right, good to talk to you again. I haven't talked to you for a while. What's going on? Yeah, okay, so we talk about this triangle of disease. Yes. The lymphatics, you just were saying, were in it. I guess, right? In that well, the lymphatic blood. system is part, yes, that's the dirty blood component. Uh, the triangle of disease is the way, the way I uh, modeled it, uh, and you're not going to read about that in a book. This, is, this came out of my experience, is the digestive system, the blood sugar system, right. and the adrenal thyroid complex. Now, the dirty blood, where does the dirty blood fit in? Because all disease is dirty blood. The blood becomes yeah. dirty from the gut, and it becomes dirty from, the, uh, uh, from blood sugar. The, the, bo the bottom two points of the triangle of disease are what lead to the the dirty blood. The dirty blood activates the adrenal glands and uh, it causes this emergency response, and that's where you get the hypothyroidism. So the dirty blood is a function of the digestive system and the blood sugar system. This is what contaminates the blood: food and sugar. Now, drugs will make a right. will make a will, will contaminate the blood as well. They'll have an effect. If you're an IV drug user, that will have an effect. Cigarette smoke can have an effect. Alcohol to uh, alcohol abuse can have an effect. But for the most part, for most of us. It's food and sugar, which is so tragic because they're completely under our control. So to oh, answer yeah. your question, the, the blood becomes dirty from the two points in the triangle of right. disease. Right, but I'm saying, okay, so the lymphatic helps clean out the blood, right? Correct. So can the As lymphatic well. get dirty and yes. clogged up? So yes. How, is the movement the one that did, keeps that clean? Yes, yes. Here's the thing about the lymph. The lymph is part of the blood. The lymph, in, the lymph and, the, and the blood are, are together composed what is called the circulatory system. So there's a, overla uh, there's a, uh, a, a kind of crossover between the lymph and the blood. They go back and forth. Blood becomes lymph and lymph becomes blood. So when we talk about dirty blood, what, it, technically what we should be saying is dirty circulation because it includes the lymph. Oh, okay. Your point is very well taken. I call it dirty blood because that's just so compelling and so provocative. I mean, it sounds yeah. good, but it's really, it, it sounds better than dirty circulation. It's more tension getting than dirty circulation. Yeah, okay. But so indeed, for cleaning up the diet, yes. making the gut lining strong so it's not leaking, yes. and then movement, then we've got it. Uh, don't forget your oxygen. And don't forget the oxygen, sugar. Oxygen, right. With, don't forget yeah. oxygen and sugar. Now, this is physical, and I know I say, I don't say this enough, I say it periodically, but there's spiritual, mental, and emotional. Right. When you, right? right. You've got to have some kind of spiritual connection, whatever that is for you. You've got to be uh, clean thinking and clean feelings, not anger and rage, yeah. you know, love and forgiveness and all the things we consider the virtues. They work with the hormones. So spirituality, mental power, controlling your thoughts and your feelings are, are are connected to the body via hormones. So it's not some kind of, you know, airy-fairy thing. I'm not just being Mr. Oh, motivational guy. Yeah. It has to do with how our body is shaped. 
Our body is shaped from our thoughts and our feelings as much as it is from our food. And it's shaped from our spiritual connection or lack thereof as much as it is by our food. So those have to be addressed. But from a physical perspective, food, sugar, oxygen, and lots of long, lush, and, and movement, and like you say, moving the body, and uh, lots of long, luscious relaxation. Body loves to rest. It heals when it's resting. All right. So Does that answer your question? how do you get the viruses out? If I, you know, I still immune get system. Cold. God gets the viruses out. The body gets the viruses out. You've got something called the immune system. The immune system right. needs to be maximized. It needs to be optimized. It needs to be leveraged. It needs to be taken advantage of and exploited. The immune system is designed to get rid of viruses and bacteria and funguses. But the food we eat suppresses immunity. The food we eat puts a burden on the immune system. Sugar suppresses immune, immunity. Sugar puts a burden on the immune system. Lack of oxygen puts a burden on the immune system. You see what I'm saying here? All the okay. things that cause disease that you need to work that we need to be working on work at least partially by immune system suppression or immune system overload. So for okay. shingles is a perfect example. You know, we talked to a gal a couple days ago who had shingles, and that is an, or maybe it was on my on the Dead Doctor show I think I talked about, about shingles. Uh, shingles is a virus, and you get these guys on TV talking about the herpy, uh, or Terry Bradshaw talking about the, the vaccine now for the shingles va vaccine. They put the fear of God into you. They say if you've ever had chicken pox one out of three of you is going to have shingles. Right now the shingles virus is living inside of you, and it's all true. But the fact is, is if your immune system is strong and powerful, you're not going to get the shingles. So boosting the immune system by caloric restriction, watching what you eat, patching up the gut, reducing your sugar intake, using your sweeties, getting on your healthy, uh, healthy start pack, making sure you're using more protein. There's a thousand different ways that you can support immune health, and almost all of them are what we talk about here on The Bright Side every day. Yes. All right, Shauna. Okay. All right. Thank God you bless so you. Have a good to talk okay. to you. Have a beautiful day. Take care. Okay. Let's go to Peggy in Texas. Good morning, Peggy. How you doing? Hi, Ben. I had a question about warfarin and cardival. My husband had an echo March 16th, and it showed a, a little mass lump of tissue near the microvalve in the left ventricle. He okay. called it some kind of a lycoma, a fatty tumor maybe, okay. and he wanted to put him on Warfarin and then Cardival, even though his blood pressure was 121 over 74 on the left oh, arm. Nice. And, and so they're right just drugging him up just in case. Over 74. Well, we haven't done it because he's been battling heart disease since he was 42 and he's 70 now. And okay. we got off all of those. And he's doing great. Drugs. What is he? Well, he's doing great. What's a doctor going to do? I know. That's why I, we haven't done it yet, but yet we have to go back. We're going to go back and see him. Are they June. scaring I, you? I know he's going to fuss at us. And, They're scaring but, you probably, putting pressure yeah, on you. Yeah, they are, and I don't want him to go on that war I don't blame you. I, I don't blame you. Thinking, what, what do you Get, here's what five, I would be doing. Use. E. Yes, exactly what I was going to say. You know what I'm going to say. Use your natural blood thinners, number one. Uh -huh. Vitamin E is a natural blood thinner. Omega-3 fats are natural blood thinners. Um, all, the, all the phytonutrients, or many of the phytonutrients that we've talked about here in the program can have blood thinning effects. Make sure he's eating his veggies, mixing them up with coconut oil or butter or, or even a little bit of vegetable oil. But make sure you're very careful with the vegetable oil because bad vegetable oil is not a good thing. Uh, movement is very, very important for, for, improving, for improving the movement of blood. So exercise. Um, uh, do, and it doesn't have to be intense exercising, just something, even isometrics where you just press your hands together you know, real hard. That could be uh, an effective exercise. Walking around the block, getting on a treadmill, anything like that. Deep breathing can help facilitate the movement of blood. Uh, hanging upside down on an uh, inversion device, if you can find one or go to a gym, that can be helpful as well. Um, and then keep the blood sugar down. I, cannot, I can't emphasize that enough. As best as possible, I know sugar is hard to get off of, but keep yeah, his blood so sugar down. I started drinking alcohol whiskey, and I, I don't know how to break him of that. Well, I think that's you what's can't. contributing yeah. to it. He's free will. He gets to do what he wants to do. I, that's the, that's Believe it or not, sugar, straight sugar, is probably worse for him than a shot of whiskey every day. All right, oh, I got to really? go, Peggy. If you want more okay. information, send an email to ben at ksco.com. Put your phone number in there, and I'll call you directly. And that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for listening to The Bright Side, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.